Hey, what's going on? I've been meaning to make this video for a long time now. I finally finished and completed my first semester of school, but I wanted to make sure that I did complete the first semester. And now I'm moving on to my second semester. And I just wanted to give an update and a, and a report. And I uh, just wanted to share just where I'm at and just my progress and how things have been and how I feel about the program thus far. So let's start there. So coming into the program, um, orientation day, it was a almost 300 students As a matter of fact it was I think it was 300 students and that's that's just at my campus there's 23 campus that, that Galen has I'm sorry I'm just looking at my cat she walked out the house just want to make sure I keep her in in sight and so, you know, um, it, it's a two-year program. I believe I said that in my last video in reference to schooling. And I'm just taking it one semester at a time. Each semester is 90 days. And taking it one assignment at a time each week. And so I had um, anatomy and physiology, and I had its lab. Now I'm moving on to AMP2 and lab 2. We also took this um, semester a course called GPS. That's called uh, Galen's Pathway to Success. Galen's pathway to success and there was a lot of different modules in there preparing us for the rest of the course I guess I'll read some to you so you so you, so you have an understanding of what I was working with and assignments that I had to turn in so week one was orientation I had to write about ourselves you know just introducing ourselves to one another and our professor did the same in week two we learned about time management as a student um, how we need to get that under control and also in week three we was looking at um, APA format to cite sources. Yeah, how you doing, boss? What up, man? All right. And um, in week four, we had to we learned how to use a um, so it's called. Let me tell you what it's called. Recognize how to coded text, coded text, which I never used that before. So that was pretty cool. And it just basically teaches you how to take a large body of, of a subject and break it down into smaller chunks because when you look at the whole project it looks overwhelming but they teach you way how to um, break it apart so that it's not so overwhelming you just have to ask certain questions like the what so what now what and um, yeah week five we went over study strategies that would help us to improve um, our test taking. And yeah, so I don't want to bore you with the rest of it. So that's what GPS was about. The fourth class that I had was called Information Liter Literacy and Technology Essentials. So, as a new nurse, we have to learn 
how to secure our information when we log on to the system or wherever we we're going to be working at and also how to protect our patient's information, the company's data and all that information. So that's really the gist of it is learning how to use technology in our current modern um, day as nurses and just also learning new technology as it rolls out because new technology will be coming out. And and that was pretty much the gist of it. I don't even, I'll read three to you, three of the modules that I had. For example, we had how to use databases and search skills. Um, if you never knew how to use Microsoft Word, there's a course in there. PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint, Excel, revising our work. My favorite though was healthcare informatics and technology in the workplace, which I didn't even know that was a field in nursing, healthcare informatics and technology. Doing all right. Sorry about that. So the health informatics that I was talking about is this. Um, says uh, this week we will we will be introduced to healthcare informatics, what it means and why it is important. You will also learn about developments and future challenges in the digital healthcare environment while focusing on those technologies that may impact the nurse as technology continues to rapidly evolve. It is difficult to say for certain which technologies will materialize into widespread integration in the clinical setting. This week is really all about looking ahead and considering the possibilities. So that was pretty interesting. Um, these people get paid buco bucks but their responsibilities are really really a heavy load to carry and um, yeah my 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 buck no broad aren't so strong for carrying the kind of workload that I don't want that responsibility the pay looks great but I don't want that responsibility so before I wrap it up though, I just want to share with you two things that I had wrote. And I've been, been, been one, especially the first one, my introduction. My introduction to the course, to the school, to the class, to my peers. So I just want to share my introduction to you. I'm just scrolling through trying to find mine. There's so many of us in the class, so. Mine is here, somewhere. Ah, here I am. Let me show you. Similar. Yeah, I need it. Yeah. You wanna see my cat? She right there. See how this all sleep. Hello everyone, my name is Detroit Gray. 
I am currently a nurse tech at a rehab hospital. I've relocated here to the Tampa region last July with my wife and children. I've been a nurse assistant consistently since 2019. I've had this hunger of becoming a nurse that year. I was residing in Philadelphia at the time and was accepted into an LPN program that same year, but there were some unfortunate circumstances that held me back from continuing my training and studies while into my second semester. So I made a decision to pause for a while with the intention to one day start over again. I want to accomplish this goal of mine of becoming a nurse so bad that even now, just the thought of it brings a slight tear to my eyes. My intro is going to be a little lengthy, so please be patient with me. Envisioning myself walking across the stage to receive my ADN and receiving in my mailbox my registered nurse license is a dream I pray will come true. Like when LeBron James won the NBA Finals for his hometown basketball team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, as he celebrated hugging the trophy crying with tears he said these words that I marked down in basketball history forever and I quote Cleveland this is for you I too want to say similar words when I've achieved it all my family and Jamaica this is for you Oh yes, I am also Jamaican. I was born there, but grew up in New York. So to conclude my introduction, I want to gain the skill and training, the skills and training that Galen will give me so that I too can say something similar to what LeBron James said when he left the Cleveland Cavaliers the first time which was and I quote I'm taking my talents to South Beach <laughs> lol after completing this program as well as the BSN program and gaining my license and sharpening my skills in my specialty I will make a departure not permanently to Jamaica I too will one day, God willing, say, I'm taking my talents to Jamaica, LOL. No, but seriously, I wish everyone here the best as we strive for our goals. Amen. So that was my introduction, and I wrote that January 9th. Yeah. When I was in school the first time back in PA, I had wrote something similar to this. Yeah, so it, it never left me, it never left. And then finally, I'm gonna read, I wanna read to you my pathophysiology paper. I've never done a pathophysiology paper before. And uh, at first it was, uh, I wasn't feeling it, but um, once I got the hang of it, the swing of things, I actually ended up enjoying it. So I'm going to share with you what I wrote, because doing this course of anatomy and physiology has really shown me just the awesomeness 
of God. So my paper was about osteoporosis. So here we go, osteoporosis. So the normal anatomy and the major body systems that are affected. The human skeletal system, also called the musculoskeletal system, is a very vital structure of the human body. I call it the scaffolding of the human body, but it is usually referred to as the internal framework. The skeletal system supports and protects the body's internal organs. It creates the physical shape and movement of the body. It also stores minerals such as calcium, phosphorus, and lipids, otherwise known as fat, in the bone marrow of the bones. Here, blood cells are produced, including platelets and red blood cells. There are four types of bone cells found within bone tissue. Osteoblasts are responsible for forming new bones and found in the growing portions of bone. The periosteum and the endoosteum. So that's where you'll find the osteoblasts. Um, osteocytes maintains bone tissue and is the primary cell of mature bone and the most common type of bone cell. Osteogenic. Osteogenic stem cells are undifferentiated and they are the only cells that don't divide. Osteoclasts are responsible for bone resorption and breakdown. And I got all this knowledge from uh, Betts. That's the book that we use for this course. Next, so what does this all look like in a healthy adult? Now these are my words. What does it all look like in a healthy adult? In healthy adults, adequate bone strength is present. This is very important because as we age, we lose bone density. Women are more susceptible to this, especially after menopause. The bones lose calcium. Calcium, if you recall, is stored in our bones. With healthy bones, we're not at risk of easily fracturing our hip or wrist while maintaining an upright anatomical posture showing no curvature in our spine. This is a common occurrence for many women who have osteoporosis. But we'll get to this later. So, in the normal physiology of the major body system, what's affected? Generally, a bone density scan is done to measure bone mineral density, or BMD. For many healthy adults, the calcitonin hormone, which is an amino acid peptide, is secreted by the thyroid. It decreases the blood calcium level, or shall I say in vernacular terms, calcitonin tones the bones. For these adults who have no evidence of osteoporosis in their wrist, hip, and spine, they are living normal lives. Those men and women can perform all activities of daily living with no restrictions. With no traces of this bone disease in the spinal column, an individual can stand upright, bend and twist. With no trace of bone disease in the hip bone, an individual can comfortably walk up and down stairways and get in and out of a vehicle and squat with ease. And again, with no trace of this disease, this individual can utilize all the functions of their wrist. So, the mechanism now, now I'm gonna talk about the mechanism of pathophysiology. Although osteoporosis is generally considered a woman's disease, a small percentage of older men from 50 years old to 70 have been detected to have this chronic disease which is more commonly called osteoporotic fracture. Elderly men are also susceptible to bone mineral loss and osteoporosis and 20% and 20% of cases of osteoporosis occur in men. However, it is primarily seen in aging women, especially for most who have passed the stage of menopause. 
and are experiencing low levels of estrogen. Non-white, black African American and Spanish ethnicities are at low risk of suffering from this disease that predominantly affects women who are of white or Asian ethnicity. It is also common in those with a history and behavior of excessive alcohol abuse, smoking, and have low levels of physical, fitness, and poor diet. Long-term use of certain medications that have been linked to causing weak and thin bones is also a risk factor. Women have less muscle mass than men, and as they get older, it becomes even lesser. For many women, falls can be deter detrimental as they don't have adequate padding to withstand an impact to their weak bones. An injury to the wrist or hip is more likely to cause a fracture in women than in men. There are cases where bones have been known to fracture from lifting, bending, or from doing a light intensity activity. Osteoporosis in adolescence is not uncommon. The damage can be even more severe in those individuals who suffer from anorexia. As stated by Cabrera, anorexia nervosa, or AN, is a life-threatening eating disorder characterized by a pattern of being of binge eating or self-induced vomiting or intake restriction that is accompanied by weight loss, which has negative impact on the body, developmental and overall health. Due to extremely poor nutrition, this group suffers the worst with osteoporosis. Anorexia causes a reduction in bone formation and an increase in bone resorption, interrupting the normal flow of metabolism and disrupts estrogen's ability to be active in the osteoclastic phase. Loss of weight, strength, and depleted health also shows up in various ways, both internally and externally in, the, in these cases. All these factors and others increase the risk of onset osteoporosis and bone fractures. As I come to an understanding about what osteoporosis does to healthy bones, I can see why it is dubbed a silent disease. But for those who meet the criteria of it, then there isn't much surprise here. So now we move into prevention and treatment. Is there, a is there a preventative treatment plan against osteoporosis? Sadly, no. As I've since learned, this is a bone disease that can be genetic by birth for some women and genetic by default of one's own ethnic DNA, ethnic DNA. But there are several proactive things that we can do to keep it at bay, even slow down its progression as we age in life. As a nurse who would have a patient with osteoporosis, I'd educate them on cultivating a healthy lifestyle that entails a balance of consuming a healthy diet of meals and supplements that are rich in vitamin D, calcium and calcitonin. If my patients are capable of lifting weights, I'd encourage them to do so by presenting to them Wolf's Law, that our bones grow in density and stay toned from heavy load exercises. I'd remind them to use proper body mechanics and not to rush through their movements. Conclusion. Osteoporosis is not a bone disease that should be understood with fear and gloom. No, persons who will unfortunately have this disease and are living with it currently will have to learn how to perform daily tasks in safer ways. People can still have an enjoyable life living with osteoporosis if they are mindful of the limitations their body has. We've acknowledged that there is no cure, but with proactive life choices, 
of exercising and healthy dieting, persons with osteoporosis can live a comfortable life going into their elderly years. And that's my paper. But then I did something also. I added, this is not a part of the paper. This is not a part of the course. It's not being graded in addition to this paper. But like I told you in the beginning, coming into this course, I've learned so much more about the human body. And I will be learning more as I go into semester two of AMP2. So I wanted to add this, just to share this, and I did, and so let me read it to you and then we're done. Mankind is God's workmanship. What does this all have to do with osteoporosis? Just, just bear with me. The Word of God says, For you formed my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Psalms 139 verses 13 and 14, King James Version. The psalmist who wrote these words understood that his human body and flesh were created and put together in such a glorious and mysterious fashion, even in his mother's womb. I don't know for certain if he ever heard of the word zygote, but from what I've since learned in my month and a half taking this course, that is exactly what he was referring to. So he gives praise and recognition to a being whom far exceeds the power of a mortal man, a master creator, a god. The writer continued and added these words, your eyes saw my unformed body. All my days were written in your book and ordained for me before one of them came to be. Psalms 139, verse 16, King James Version. The writer is saying, even when he was still yet to be formed in the womb and in his human organism system, was yet to be completed, this God, whom he believes in, had his life mapped out. Once upon a time, the human body was blessed and had no sicknesses or diseases, created from the dust of the ground, and had God's breath of life in its nostrils. Genesis chapter 1, verse 7. King James Version. But remember that the psalmist said that he was fearfully, wonderfully made. To put this simple, this speaks of the care and, in, and attention with which God has made us. But after the fall of man, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, the curse of sin entered the world and affected all of humanity and life. Osteoporosis is one of the plethora of results of this curse. The promise of a new life and body. A promise was made that we would have a new body, a glorified body in the new life that is to come. This body will not be afflicted with sickness or disease ever again. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold! The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away 
all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain that's a good God to take away all these things because of the curse of sin that's a good God I want, I want that God to be my God I read on for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful Revelations chapter 21 verses 1 through 5 King James Version osteoporosis itself is usually not fatal however fractures that may occur can dramatically decrease a person's quality of life and increase the risk of complications that may ultimately result in death O death where is thy victory O death where is thy sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ amen first Corinthians chapter 15 verses 55 to 58 and that's from the Amplified version so that was my paper well he graded it and um, to my surprise this is what scored uh, right there 100 out of 100 hmm? amazing absolutely amazing yeah, here's my paper I was I was so stoked I couldn't believe it you know I felt like I did really really good on it but I didn't know I would get a perfect score and so I give God the glory for that mm -hmm. yeah man that's the thing that moving on to semester two quarter two and The journey continues for me to become a nurse, a registered nurse. So that's how I'm just going to do this. So every three months, I'll give you an update. Instead of boring you every week with what I'm doing, how's it going, I'll just give you an update every three months. All right, I'm out. I'm, uh, I'm going to continue to live on purpose godly purpose and I pray that you continue live on purpose godly purpose whoosh